the one has to see. Because uh, he was seen. The hypocrite was seen, right? Uh-huh. So he, he got his um his reward, I guess. You know, he got that satisfaction of people seeing him. Exactly. And that satisfaction of Charlie is empty because people will look at you one minute and guess what? There's nothing else. There's nothing else because the law is not in it. And the father see you in secret and reward the one who look for intimacy in the open. So what you ask in the secret, he bring it to pass in the open. It's, I answer the question, what does it mean? How the father can see you? How do you see the father? The prayer closet is one of the mysterious place because whatever and happen by in that place, the Holy Spirit keep saying kononia, Whatever happened into that intimacy, whatever happened is exactly like, you know, when you see like a husband and wife getting into a room, whatever happened there, you can see only the produce after. You can see only the produce after because what happened be behind closed door is part of the intimacy. Let's take the same analogy to come to God. What happened between God and you? The fruit will be seen. The fruit of you going in the secret place. The fruit of you pleading to God or uh, having that special intimacy with God will happen in the open place. So let's go to the next so the secret place. The most famous verse, you will see that this verse is so used, especially and unfortunately during uh, the funeral. Most of the place, they choose Psalm 91. One. He will dwell in the secret place of the most high, shall remain, this is a version, a special version, Shall remain stable. Hold on. Shall remain stable and fixed under the shadow of the Almighty. And he said, Whose power no foe can withstand. We are told about a secret place where the person who dwell will be in total security. Total security. That place belongs to the Most High. Is it a physical place or a spiritual place? So, what do you think, Holy? What do you think, Minister Usha? This secret place, what is it for you? Spiritual place. Spiritual. Spiritual. It's in His presence. Exactly. And it can be a place in your house also where you decide that I'm consecrating this place. I'm praying in this place. And because you stay in a place for, and you pile up prayer to that place, guess what? That place in your house actually could carry a special presence that is not in your kitchen or is not in your bathroom. So it's a spiritual place, but that can be also in a physical place. I remember at church, and I remember when uh, Pastor Usha came, we consecrated, I think, the altar. I don't know if she remember even. But when she left, anyone who would come to the altar after, Every time they have reached the place where she was standing and ministry, they will feel a presence of God that is mighty. And they will not understand how in this little century that we have, 
They can be in the back, nothing happened. They can be in the middle, jumping, nothing happened. But exactly where she was standing and prayed that prayer, they will feel like the, the um, how could I say? They will feel like the, the legs are not standing anymore. They feel like uh, something is happening to them. What happened there is sometime, and uh, I hear the word endowment, there's sometime a special deposit in a place where the presence of God is manifested. So it's spiritual, but it could be also a physical place. But in this, mostly, the secret place of each one of us is spiritual first. It's a place of safety where there's no trouble. And Psalm 32, 7. Can you read the Amplified 32, 7? You, you are a hiding place for me. You, Lord, preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs and shouts of deliverance. Amen. It's the song we were singing. You are my hiding place. Mm. Hallelujah. We find that place in him first. We find a place where we can go and hide and nothing can touch us. We find a place where we can actually take refuge in him. And as soon as we are there, we know we are delivered from anything, from fear or anything else. Here we could imagine the secret place is the presence of God that will prevent the attack of the enemy. And we have also, you can read Psalm 31, 20 and Isaiah 26, 20. Can you read for me? In the secret place of your presence, you hide them from the plots of men. You keep them secretly in your pavilion from the strife of tongues. Isaiah 26, 20. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the Lord's wrath is past. Amen. He's yes. inviting us to that place. It's not like, hallelujah, hello, grace. He's inviting us to the secret place. He said, come to this place. Come and hide. Come and hide from what? From the strife of tongues. Come and hide from what? From the wrath even of God. Come and hide in him. So it's a place of protection. Hallelujah. So how do I find the secret place? There comes the time where you will need to know God by yourself and learn who he is for you. Knowing him intimately shifts your life. Where do I find the secret place where I hear God and I can speak to him without any translation, without any interpreter? I was always jealous when I hear story of the pastor having a special encounter and everything. Jealous in a good way. I want that. I'm hungry. I want that. So I found that God was listening to people very, very early in my in on age. I was nine years old. He could hear my prayer. I don't need to be a pastor. I don't need to be an elder. I just need to be me and talk to him. So I developed that place by speaking to him in my heart. For me, the secret place before being a physical place is talking to God in my heart. I start speaking to him in my heart and I ask him, can you answer? And I say, can you answer by your word? And I will tell you why I ask him to answer by the word. Because I found that, guess what? The enemy sometimes try to imitate his voice. He tried to come to me with the same kindness and everything. And then I found that mm, with discernment, 
It was not God. Never God can speak to me that way just to trap me. So I say, no, give me your word. Give me your word. And guess what? The Bible is a wonderful book because a word, a word of God can explain another word of God. So when is his word? I know it's him speaking. Now his word has to correspond to another word for me to call. To, to, to confirm his him speaking to me. Hallelujah. So this prayer closet is one step to finding the secret peace. I cannot find God if I do not make time for prayer of worship. I have to have time. I have to have time. This is where the story of Martha and Mary has more relevance. Amen. Can you read uh, Luke 10, 38 to 42? Holy. Sure. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself. Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Amen. This is one of the famous story of the Bible, Mary and Martha. So let's dissect it just a little bit. Martha opened her home. She's the one who opened her home to him. But she was the one who was the most busy one. But she's the one who opened her home. You could take some initiative for God, but still miss the goal of his presence. You have to be very careful. That in the busyness of what we try to do for God, we miss God. We have to be careful what we are doing in the name of God. Is it the will of God for us to be busy like that? Number two, Mary was listening to the word. Listening to the Lord. There is one thing to be aware of your surrounding and another thing to listen to what God has to say. So we have two voices here. We have the voice of God and you have the voice of whatever is happening around you. If you are more busy to listen to what is happening around you, you can miss the voice of God. In any situation, Ask yourself, what is the law saying? Because you are brought to any situation because of God. He wants to glorify himself. So when is chaos, what is the law saying? So let's listen. From outside, there was a dinner to serve and people to serve. So it is a lot of things should have done, be done around the house. That is from outside. For the time and moment, it was a time to listen to the Lord, not to run around. So you can be doing many things, but out of the will of God. To be in the secret place, we allow you to do things at the right time. When you are in the secret place and when you are talking to him, you know exactly what to say and what to think and what to do at the right time. Number three, Martha was distracted. What is distraction? It's a lack of focus not being able to get 
the importance of the moment, to discern the importance of the moment. Not be able. Sometimes we are distracted by others. We are waiting approval of others. Or we are waiting the crowd to follow. Or we are waiting something that has to, to be out of the will of God. We are looking for a sign outside to know that we are with God. You look for a sign outside of what God is giving you of that moment. Martha was distracted. Number four, Martha was complaining. She's the one who came and said, hey. So even in the business, she was not so busy that she will not even go and bother the Lord. No, she's the one who brought back her business. When I say business, it's B-U-S-Y-N-E-S-S. -S -S. Because you will see that when you are in that state of not being at rest, not being at peace with God, you feel unsatisfied. And by feeling unsatisfied, you are frustrated. So God can be there all of this time, but you're still frustrated. So Martha was complaining. What are you complaining about? She has a little bit of self-righteousness. How about me? Why you don't see? Why? Why she's just sitting there? You have to be careful. Why the Lord called Martha twice? He said, Martha, Martha, twice. In Africa, when we call you twice, that means you better listen. Some even people call you three times for you. And they ask you after, have you, how many times did I call you? So we have to listen. What is better will not be taken from you. We need to understand that the time and the season. Seize what is better. Choose what is good for you. Every time and season has his matter time and his merry time. Choose to be merry, even if it's matter running, running, running around, choose to be merry and decide, God, what is it? I want to hear what I should do. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next. How do I find the secret place? We continue. Mary at the feet of Jesus was resting on him, listening to the voice of God and his will will, will give you rest. This is why Psalm 91 1 is talking about the dwelling place of God. You can choose to just do once the moon. You have to be aware of the mighty presence of God and refer him. We are in the society where we think we can adjust God to our schedule. A lot of us are learning how to fear God and how to be in awe. Sometimes we pray at four, then jump on the, the, the next, like Uber or something. I, I, I remember I wrote this lesson when I was going, walking by Union Station, running to Union Station, then meet the bank and go and go and go. We are in a generation of people who go always wrong. Our schedule became our oh God. It's the problem of this generation. Our appointment became our deities. We organize our life around our busy life and we would like God to comply. If I'm saying something wrong, please put your hand up and let me know. We think Reverend P will have all this time with God because it's her job. Some people think it's only pastor. We need to spend so long hours to pray or oh, minister of God. No, 
all of us have one life to magnify God on this earth and eternity to praise him. We have to be in the secret place to find rest on God. Can you read Isaiah 26 verse 3? Holy. You will guard him and keep him in perfect in constant peace whose mind, both its inclination and its character, is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you and hopes confidently in you. Amen. This is one of the main benefits of dwelling in the presence. He will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace. Do you know what is perfect and constant peace? Is a treasure. Perfect and content peace. Whose mind is stay on you. Check yourself. Even if you go to work. Even if you do whatever. Can you keep your mind on God the whole time? If yes. Guess what? You have discovered the secret. Perfect peace. Perfect, constant peace. Your mind is on him and not your schedule. Your mind is the inclination and his character are on God. So many times the character is so different to what the mouth says. We need proper alignment. We need alignment between your character who you are, and what you see is very important. That is another big subject. But you need to be aligned to what God wants you, Christ-like character. The commitment to the Lord also. This is not a seasonal activity. You cannot say, okay, I'm seeking God for this period just because I want this solution. No. This is a commitment, it's a consecration. Number four, you hope in on him. You, your hope are on him, not on Wall Street or your bank account or how much is in your bank account. Your heart will not change because the money go low in your bank account. No, it's the same even if you are low, even if you are up. Perfect peace. Go to the next. How do I dwell in the secret place? Many people find God so many ways. Some people, it's because they were sick. Then they find a healer. Then they find God. Some people need a deliverance. They find the deliverer. They find God. Some unemployment. They look for a job, they pray, they find God. Some were lonely, God, they meet God, and God put them in a family, they find God. There's so many ways to find God. Remember in the, the Bible, Saul went to look for donkeys. In the midst of looking for donkeys, he found Samuel, and he was anointed king. He became prophet, a prophet there. But as they find God and are revived for why, why they lose the zeal and the love of God again? The last example I gave of Saul, after being anointed out of nowhere, after being a prophet out of nowhere, how did he lose that and start being the soul that we knew at the end, who ended pitifully? Sometimes it's a lack of commitment. Sometimes it's just emotional revival. People, they go after emotion. That one, we see that a lot too. Oh, from now on, Reverend, from now on, you commit to a man of God. You don't commit to God. When you commit to God, trust me, someone does not have to tell you, wake up to go to church or do anything, you know is the place where you need to be. 
So emotional revival, if it was, Lord forgive us. We need a spiritual revival, a true revival. Another cause of losing that love and that secret place is the lack of the word of God. Look at the word of God like fire. I can even say firewood because firewood has to continue to burn in order for it to keep the flame. As soon as there's no more word, you will see that your love will go down. But if you continue to nourish the fire with new log, you will see that the fire will go up. More meditation. More meditation. Not only like uh, thinking, head thinking, head knowledge, no. Meditation that go in the bloodline. With the word we come fit. The lack of faith also can do for the love of God to go now. So the secret place, this is the illustration I received. The secret place is like a garden where you grow flowers. You need to nourish them and renew your intimacy with God. When you have a flower, flowers, you make sure you get rid of bad habits. It's like pruning. You just pour water. You nourish and you have your garden with God. Singing new song to him. Falling in love daily with him. If you have a love and you never express love to your lover, you will die out of love. So you go in the secret place to nourish that love. You need to stop bringing like a list of prayer only and complain and take the time to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Learn to know the Holy Spirit by himself. There's one man who challenged me. I wrote, I, 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 I read his book, was practicing the presence of God. He was telling in the book that he know when the law come, and he know when the Holy Spirit come. I was like, oh my God, that one. Because for me, when I'm in the presence of God, or when I'm in, in the presence of one of them, I will just think it's the same thing. But no, they have different manifestations. So he said that you usually have the Lord coming, the Lord Jesus, and then, the law told him that you don't know the Holy Spirit. This is why it's not coming to you. He was thinking uh, he has the Holy Spirit because he was praying to us and everything. The law told him, no, go and ask the Holy Spirit to come and invite him. And he asked the law, how? The law said, exactly the way you know I come, go and make time for the Holy Spirit. I start praying until he come. He said he took him weeks to build the intimacy and prepare actually for the Holy Spirit to come because the Holy Spirit was not coming. He was not hearing him. And then, and he will enter a room just with his Bible, a bottle of water and nothing else. And he will wait there. And he will tarry there. And he will wait there. He will read the Bible. He will sing the song, inviting the Holy Spirit, asking him to come. After a while, he said the Holy Spirit start coming. And now he knew the difference when the Lord come or when the Holy Spirit come. That type of story challenged me. I said, I want that one too. And I start looking. The way the Holy Spirit speak, the way it talked to me, the way it come to me. All of us has different way the law speaking. Some have to go to sleep before they hear. Some can hear like that. Some can only hear. Some can see. There are different ways. 
but we need to be challenged and be hungry in such a way that if there's a way that is available, you tell God, Father, I want that also. Singing new songs, dancing with joy in front of the throne, laughing joyfully in the spirit of God. All of these are experience of the secret place. No one like a grumpy lover complaining about others day and night. No one like it. How else do I dwell? By meditating. Hallelujah. Meditating. The word, that is another way to dwell. Do you know you can read a word and ask the Holy Spirit himself to explain that to you? If you read any word and you take enough time, you stay in that word. I don't say, okay, you go on Google, you start Googling left and right and everything. No, that is another activity for another time. But you go, you stay in the word and you say, mm, I don't understand this one. Holy Spirit, reveal me this word. He can teach that to you. As you hear my voice, is the same he can teach to you, just like a teacher. He can take every part of that word and dissect it and bring it into you. And you, you can see a brand new image or a brand new understanding of the word. You'll be amazed. So you have conversation with the Holy Spirit based on what you are reading. That is intimacy and the secret place. Those things can grow only when you give time. What is it, Father? Explain me this word. Do you know all of the teaching? I've done many, but I've received many from other men of God also. But most of the teaching I receive, like he will just give me one word. Sometimes I have to sit and say, you have to explain to me. Because if I don't understand it very well, it's almost impossible for me to explain that to others. So I have to understand it very well first. I have to go and tell him, okay, show me the way you want me to understand and the way you want me to teach that to others. So he has to come back and tell me, okay, Paulette, for this, take this book. Let's go to the book of Ruth. You see, when you sit at the feet, you see how Mary sits at the feet of Jesus. When Ruth came and started warming the feet of Boaz, it's a sign already. It brings the attention of the husband. It brings the attention of the master. It brings the attention that he is or she is expecting on me. So that attention needs reaction. And he starts explaining left, right, by different books. He can bring you from Genesis to the Old Testament, but it's not you doing, it's him telling you through revelation. That is another way of the secret place, of being able to converse in the spirit, internally with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I have early meetings. When I wake up sometime in the morning, Sometimes I don't rush and I pray that very early no one should talk to me. Why? Because sometimes it's in that time I receive the word and it's like a review of truth. He will he open the book. He say, okay, you have been praying for sisters, sis, this and that. This is what you need to tell her. Tell her this word from me. You pray for the other one. This is what you need to tell her. For that one, give him this verse. From that one, sometimes you see even in the forum, 
I will just pop up with a new video like that and send it to everybody. It's not me sending. It's telling me that one need that word. The other one need that word. That one needs your attention. Remember, it's like a planner. It's like a, a meeting where everything is planned. Very early in the morning, and sometimes it does not take that long for him to give you the agenda of the day. Now you know what you need to do that day. As you are working during the day, even though if you have to go to work, even though you have to buy some grocery for the food, even though you do, you are conversing with him. So that secret place is not just a place in the house where you pray. You can carry the secret place the whole day by keeping your mind on him as you are driving, as you are showering, as you are even at work. Your mind can be on him, conversing with him. As soon as I finish a task, let's say, he said, go and tell Sister Grace this, this, this. I know before the end of the day, I need to call Sister Grace and tell her exactly. I should not add my own, you know? They tell you, okay, give this to the, you add your own element, your own flavor. No, no, no. Holy Spirit is not like that. Tell him what I say to her. The word I use is very important. You say it, then you go back to him. You say, Daddy, I did it. He will tell you, just wait now. He know what he's doing with the person. You, you are just a messenger. Hallelujah. So that is the way, different way I'm telling you how to build that intimacy, that secret place. I can ask all type of questions in that place. Sometimes I have answer. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes it drop the answer when I don't expect it anymore. I, I forgot even the subject. Then it drop the answer. How else do I dwell? By silencing all worries. We learned it yesterday. Humility is the lack of worries and submitting them at the feet of our Lord. He order or step. Believe me, the law order or step. There's no coincidence in the Lord. He order or step. Take your strength from the Lord. Dwell in his secret place. There you will enjoy his presence. Amen. I want to stop here and see if there's any question. Not we pray. Hallelujah. I love the teaching. Thank you. So good. It was so good. Thank you. Just practicing his, his presence like that. The Holy Spirit and deciphering between Jesus and Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you. No. Thank you, Rev. I came in late, but I got what I think I needed to hear. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I was sharing with the sister lately, you know, we're just talking and in the course of our conversation, we're praying and she was talking of a burden that the Lord laid on her heart concerning a friend that was going through divorce. And she was like seeing that that was the, the, the enemy's attack. And so God was leading her to go there for prayers. And she did not know how to go about it. I said, okay, <laughs> I'm Reverend Paulette's daughter. I need to pour what I always learn <laughs> to my sister. Amen. So I was telling her different strategies and steps that you have been uh, teaching us here. And uh, she implemented it. And at that time also, while I mean, I've, I've been in a season of fasting. Without even knowing, I was in the kitchen cooking and I'm here talking to her, telling what to do. And I was explaining her, this is what you have to do. You cover your family, you cover yourself, you pray for the sister. And it's in the warfare. It's not about. So I was just giving her different 
things to do. And her little daughter was also there listening. The following day she went, she followed the steps and she could feel well she was doing the the, the deliverance, she could feel how she was getting dry within her, like she, she was so thirsty after the session. I thought that that's, that's just the enemy that wants to attack her, but she has won the battle. And so we're just talking, this lady and her children gave their life to Jesus Christ. And her sister-in-law that same day in the car while she's talking, her sister-in-law is at the back and she's listening to us talking in ways that she's not really understanding. And then before, we knew, before I knew it, that sister-in-law just pour out herself and she said she's going through a lot in her life. She doesn't know she has come to the end of herself. And at that time, that sister again preached the gospel to her. That lady gave her life to Jesus wow. Christ. So, I mean, it was just like a back to back. And I was like, Jesus, I'm here in the kitchen. I'm cooking. I'm doing this thing. And these children are there playing. I have to prepare for an exam. And this kind of thing is happening. <laughs> this is how your presence is. I thought it was only going to be like I need to be in the room, and then that's just that's just it. And then the spirit told me that he wants me to be in his presence everywhere, like everywhere. Amen. And joining and hearing you talking that we have to carry the presence of God. I'm like, wow. <laughs> so thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> it's such a confirmation. Amen. And their powerful testimony. Amen. 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 Is there another question or comment or anything before we pray? Amen. Hallelujah. So let's pray because um, having that intimacy start by you asking. Don't think that it's just an impartation like that, like, okay, uh, if I don't have it, that means I don't have it. No, you ask for it. When you are hungry, this is why the Lord said, come and drink. You are thirsty. Come and eat when you are hungry. You are the one deciding, hey, I want more. I want to have more. I didn't say go and live on the mountain and wait there. No. It's exactly where you are. Where you are with children at age, where you have nothing else but diapers and after diapers, homework, and after homework, your own homework. And then you turn around, your husband is hungry, and then you have to clean this room and everything. It's a mix of all of this that you learn that God can give you rest in the multitude of tasks. I've learned it because I have a very large family. And when I usually go to retreat sometime, trust me, I say I'm going to retreat in the beginning. Now I can go with a two or three. In the beginning, the whole church will follow me. When I say I'm going to retreat, Sometimes we are 14, we are 20. And guess what? When I wake up there, as soon as I wake up, I start seeing message. Re, uh, they call me Sister Paulette. Sister Paulette, can you interpret my dream? Sister Paulette, I have this vision. Sister, So I was overwhelmed. I remember one day where I came to Ashland. It's not that I'm complaining, but I'm telling you how my life was. I went to Ashland. I have more than almost 20 people with me. At the same time, I met a pastor there who was having trouble, and he's a pastor of deliverance, who was having trouble with his ministry. Oh my God, I could not do one step without the men behind me. And he wanted me to interpret to him too. He speaks French, but he wanted me to interpret to English. And the only interpreter he has found was me. I said, oh my God, I will lead the children. I have the church, then I have this pastor. I said, Lord, I need your presence so much. But how could I do between my responsibility as a woman of God and I need you? And he gave me also the secret. He said, when you put everybody asleep, 
come to me. So I will make sure that I offend everybody, take care of everybody. And then on that time, on that time, uh, Pastor Usha, I think the, the, the little chapel in Ashland was, you can go there and pray. I will go and I meet the Lord by himself. I will be talking. It's so refreshing because it gave me the time where I could be without all the noise and pulling left and right and everything. It's so important to come back to him after you have gave left, right, and everything. It's so important. It's more than important. Because you can have an anointing that is heavy and you give, you give, you give, you give, you forget yourself. That can kill you. Remember Moses? It's his father-in-law who told him that they will kill you if you continue like that. Give responsibility. Let everyone. And the one who receive from the spirit of Moses start doing the way Moses was doing, and he could rest. So the secret place is very important because he keep, he gives you and he keeps you in the anointing within. The anointing can be upon. It's the one you give to people. The anointing is within also. It's the one you maintain in the secret place. Hallelujah. Let me stop here. Amen. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this lesson. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for grace and mercy. We thank you for everything you are doing. Father, all of us are open. And we want more of you, more of the secret place. Father, teach us the way you have learned from the Father. Mm. Holy Spirit, we want to know you also. We know you are there. We want to ask forgiveness for not acknowledging your presence. Yes. For grieving you. Yes. Holy Spirit, we love you. We adore you. Have your way with us. Thank you for you will make this world become a life. And we know how to go deeper in your presence. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Be blessed. Have a great night. Bye-bye. Thanks, Reverend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much.